fact, and the the man who uncovered that chamber, um, one hundred percent named the emperor after this man, Tigernamps, right? Son of Folak, son of Ethriel, a descendant of Uriman, was according to medieval Irish legend and historical traditions, the early high king of Ireland. Okay, Gaelic Ireland. And um, why this is important, um, because when you look farther into these time frames and these names, again, I've been correlating that some of the biblical histories of Ireland, um, Palestine, um, the Arabian Sea, the Red Sea was happening here in America, right? And Ire, Iri that Arizona was the original land of the Irie or the Irish. Um, the red, the first, the first home, as we were just saying here with Emperor Tigrinus, and that the first Tesian race found its home here in the equatorial belt of America. Right? So the name Tigrinus takes us to this gentleman. Um, historical traditions lead us to that he was the high king of Ireland. Now the correlation here is also important because when you look at the time frames, it synchronizes his reign with the deaths of Thinius, Declius, kings of Assyria, the reigns of David and Solomon in Israel. Now, this is important because this now we're correlating more of the Utah video, right? Um, all of the mining regions of Utah were called the mines of Ophir. The mining regions of, of Colorado, the oldest mining regions of Colorado, at least from an English standpoint, 1800s, were called the Mines of Ophir. I've postulated that the Mormon Temple of Salt Lake is the original King of Solomon, or Temple of Solomon, my apologies, that the um, it was the original Mecca of the region. And that when Moses led his people uh, across the Red Sea, it was the Vermilion Sea of California. And that, that Moses was buried in Moab of Utah on Mount Nebo, or at least looking over the regions from Mount Nebo. And we're, the, the, again, this is all a stretch, but seeing more and more of the correlations again with, you know, Arizona got its name from the Irie. We're finding... More and more people in the late 1800s saying that the Tesian race it finds its oldest historical placement here in America, here in Arizona, Ayeri Zuna, here in Colorado, here in Utah. Now here we are, episode eight, New Mexico. And the timelines are overlapping with the kings of Assyria. Now Assyria is as I've been postulating and finding lots of uh, historical evidence for in these newspapers, Assyria was along the Mississippi Valley. Now we're finding correlations between the pottery, the language, the iconography, right? All along this same area, the equatorial belt. You know, it extends farther, but in this time frame we're discussing, you know, post these cataclysms, whatever they were, several of them. And, um, yeah, so really interesting connection here. Um, important to remember. And here's another little segment he sent me. This Tyrinamas, or Tigrinus, was the monarch who set up the fabulous idol called Kong Crunch. Now, this is important. Idols were found all over this region, lots of them. Sun worship is very much connected to this as well. Now, the next article we're going to read, we're going to talk about the Druids of New Mexico. This idol, Crom Crunch, was worshipped up to the time of St. Patrick. Now, what did we just describe? The, the most important symbol in the painted chamber, the burial tomb of Emperor Tigrinus, was the serpent. The most important sacred symbol in the painted tomb, I'm repeating this, was the carved serpent. Now, in Colorado, we find carved serpents um, that look like Chinese serpents, quote Chinese, right? We find the same thing in Utah and the same thing in California. The serpent, 
was a potent symbol like the swastika that connects a lot of these people together, right? And this idol was worshipped until St. Patrick. And what did St. Patrick do? Well, he drove the serpents, quote, the serpents out of Ireland. Well, there are no snakes in Ireland, but there are tons of snakes in the American Southwest all over. And the only remains of a dragon ever found in a cave in Utah. If you saw my Utah video, you'll remember um, the prospector finds the 100-foot-long skeleton of a dragon in a cave 50 feet below ground. And um, he won't give up the location of it. And then who, who's who's called? The Smithsonian's notified because this guy's looking to get paid. And the Smithsonian offered him 50 grand and you never heard about it again. Okay. This is like 1877. 50 grand in 1877. That's a lot of money. Okay. The Smithsonian was paying exorbitant amounts of money. And who were they getting their funding from? Well, stay tuned to my Smithsonian video and we'll get into that a little bit more. This, mar this monarch introduced now also, if you haven't seen my Arizona video, and I, I apologize, but, but this is important because I make a lot of correlations here. The first monarch of Arizona, we talk about the monarch, the king, the six-toed giant king dug up in Arizona who was wearing the mitre, okay? The bishop's mitre, okay? This monarch introduced certain distinctions among the Irish, being wearing certain colors, which certain person believed to have the origin of the Scotch plaid. You guys, this is huge, okay? This is the tartan. Scotch plaid is tartan. Now, who was wearing the tartan? Well, many of the ancient races from Montezuma all the way up until, you know, some of these, um, quote, aboriginal tribes at the Gulf of Mexico that Longo's done such a good, great job of talking about, okay? So the tartan was assigned by this man as a distinction of rank important okay the celts the scots existing here all over the american southwest the the anchor the oldest um Tijan races find their home here in arizona new mexico colorado so on equatorial belt the the original area of atlantis or the remnants of atlantis sorry but yeah so you, again you can just follow my link which is in the video preview, and you can go dig on this on your own. I spent a lot of time on this, and I have so much to cover, so we're going to get off this subject here, and we're going to get on to talking about the Druids in New Mexico, okay? Let's see, where was that one? Is it farther down? Yes, it was. Dr. Benson's Buried Cities, New Mexico, 1904. Again, I'm horrible at looking at chat, but I appreciate all of you. Paul, good to see you. Lex, thanks for being here again. Jillian. Odin. Appreciate you guys. Means a lot. Um, now we're getting into the Druids of New Mexico. <clears throat> Dr. Benson's Buried Cities. The correspondence says New Mexico is covered with buried cities, of course, just like all of the world, but predominantly here in the American Southwest. A.M. Swan writes to the Albuquerque Journal Democrat as follows. The alleged find by Professor Burson of a buried city near El Paso is, if true, no matter of surprise. Of course not. They're not even surprised. Obedient to you. Yeah, I, I just shared some of your work. Hopefully you saw that. Hopefully you were in here when I did that. Uh, it's no matter of surprise to anyone who's familiar with the archaeology of New Mexico. They don't even care. They're like, where? You went 100 feet down and you found uh, 1,200 rooms? Uh, you guys, the largest building ever discovered in the world, according to some of these articles, was here in New Mexico. They found on one floor 1,200 rooms. Okay? 1,200 rooms on one floor of a building. Insane. Okay? Insane. And we talked about the two buildings in Colorado that were both 6,000 feet long. Anyways, back to the article. And if true, is no matter of surprise to anyone who's familiar with archaeology of New Mexico. Professor Longmire is correct in saying that there are numerous towns buried all over New Mexico. These towns and many isolated structures belonging to the same people can easily be distinguished from Pueblo ruins as they are better constructed 
often being of well-dressed stone, laid in ashlar work with cement joints, the walls generally plastered with the same cement. There is a large town buried at San Mateo in Valencia County, one of the buildings of which was partly exhumed by Dr. Juan Amando Chavez, who discovered it by accident. Another partly buried at Aguja del Ojo in Valencia County, and many others known only to cattle and sheepmen in Valencia. Socorro and Sierra Counties. Sheriff A. B. Laird of Sierra County partially exhumed a buried group of ancient buildings in which he found perfect ears of petrified corn. Of course, giant corn found all over the place. Some of the ancient forests of which Professor Lungmeyer speaks of have become petrified forests. Okay, important when we're talking about some of these cataclysms. One of these in Socorro County undoubtedly furnished shelter to an ancient druidical place of worship. This was discovered by Mayor H. Pratt of Laguna while engaged in surveying the Socorro Grant when found the altar stone was still in place but broken into sections while outer circles of standing stones were evidences of its ancient use. And this is on this is above ground, you guys. Now imagine what lies below ground, right? As we've been saying. This is a petrified forest. Okay, the whole forest petrified, tree still standing. Okay, just like we found in Arizona, they found the same thing in Utah. You'll find forests that are laid over that have been hit by some giant tidal wave for God knows what, a pyroclastic flow of some kind. And then you'll find forests like in Oregon, acres and acres, hundreds of acres, thousands of acres of trees that have been completely crystallized. Incredible. But guess what? Unfortunately, they cut them all down. The mining companies went, oh, these trees have been turned into 60% copper, 10% silver, 4% gold. They got radium inside of them. They destroyed them all. They took them all down. The only one that was saved was the Arizona Petrified Forest, and that's all laying on the ground, and it's tiny. But but in the 1800s, there were standing petrified forests found all over America. I think Professor Lungmeyer is correct in his hypothesis that sometime in the past, all human life in New Mexico has been destroyed by a catastrophe or a cataclysm. Those who were interested a few years ago in my articles upon this subject published the Southwest Magazine will remember that I gave my reasons for this belief. I think Professor L. will find some difficulty in establishing the date as a period of 20 years, having 1680 as its beginning. Yeah, I agree with that too, but there's been many cataclysms, so who knows? I have knowledge of ruins belonging to the lost race in question into which lava flowed so long ago the channels of erosion have been cut through or into it 40 feet in depth. I have in my possession lava belonging to this same lava flow that has run onto corn in the ear, the corn now embedded in the lava. Standing corn embedded in lava. It would, I think, require a good deal of credulity to believe that these channels of erosion and lava, the petrifaction of these trees, the corn, could have occur occurred in 210 years. So, yeah, he's just arguing with this guy's time frame here, but who knows, you guys, because we're dealing with several races built on top of each other and several cataclysms being the destruction of each of those. Professor Agassiz calls America the mother of continents absolutely this is now like the fourth writer who said the same thing right the mother of continents i believe she was also the mother of mankind and of civilization the lava that created table mountain and covered the calaveras school now remember we talked about calaveras it was the home of one of the largest um forests of trees left in america a hundred 50 feet down, they found a skull of a giant, one of the oldest um, skeletons ever found in the world. 
Again, I don't necessarily agree with the time frames, but we're talking about civilization on top of civilization on top of civilization, right? That's where we're at. Three or four civilizations deep. And this skull was found 100 feet below this. If you haven't seen my California video, you need to go see it. I show video or uh, images of the Calaveras uh, forest where they're, the trees are t giants. They're thousands of years old, thousand plus years old, right? And this skull was found hundreds of feet below this, right? Not to mention Calaveras County is where we're finding 50-foot horses, okay? We're finding 50-foot horses with saddles as big as mining carts on their backs. If you haven't seen my California video, please go back and check it out. Um, I'll be clipping some of that to come. <clears throat> The skull is now admitted to belong to the Miocene period of geology, and when that flowed, 16,000 feet of the Himalayan mountains and all of Egypt was under the sea. Yeah, America is the mother of continents. That man in a comparative state of civilization was contemporaneous in New Mexico with the Calaveras man of California, I think, will yet be proved 100%. So what he's saying is that the Calaveras man and these ancient people of Mexico were contemporaneous, living living side by side. Yeah. And that was thousands and thousands of years ago. I mean, what had to have happened for this man to be buried hundreds of feet below a forest that is absolutely gigantic? Huge, huge trees. All gone. So, yeah, love that juridical place of worship, standing stones, the eyrie, as we were saying, 